Hello my dear students, welcome to QCall, a very good platform for all of you to learn. My name is Prabha and today I am back with the third chapter of our science class 6 NCRT syllabus. So let us start with the topic. So uh, last time we studied about the second chapter that is components of food and this is the third chapter that is fiber to fabric. So before going into the chapter, I would like you to uh, like you all to tell your story. The story is about Pahi and Bojo. So according to the NCR syllabus, there are two people, there are two students who won a prize money and quiz. So what they did was they decided to go to a particular store to buy clothes. So when they visited the store, they got different varieties of clothes around them. So uh, the shopkeeper showed them shawls, woolen mufflers, synthetic items, silk saris. So these were the various items they got to see in the store. So they were very much excited and what they brought, bought was a shawl and a muffler. So as it was winter, so they bought that. And now they again they will be like very much surprised to see variety of uh, clothes variety of fabrics around them so let us start with one activity so the as we know there are variety of fabrics so what i want you all to do in this first activity is you will visit us to will you visit a oh tailor what does a tailor do a tailor what a tailor teaches clothes, right? A tailor teaches different variety of clothes. So there will find variety of fabrics there. So what you'll do is you'll visit a tailor first, then you'll collect all the leftovers overs that has been left after stitching the clothes. They will find various pieces of clothes there. So what you do is you collect them and keep every variety with you now let us see in the second activity what we are going so in activity one what we did was we collected different types of fabrics right so what i want you all to do is make a list of it and make and label it as uh, whatever fabric it is like say for cotton silk synthetic okay so wool so what you do is you just uh, ask the tailor for help and you just label every piece of cloth so now with the cotton item that you have labeled in activity one i want you to to take the same cotton item that you have labeled in activity one in activity two what we are going to do is you will with the cotton item that you have with the cotton fabric you have, what I want you to do is just pull the loose thread or yarn if uh, in the edges you find it. If you don't find it, you just need a needle. So what you do is with the need with the help of a needle, you just pull out one of the yarn or the loose thread. So what do you observe? So what do you, what so each fabric is made up of um, like made up of yarns, right? So each single yarn is made up of some kind of fabric. So it is a cotton. So now we'll look at what is it actually made up of. You have uh, drawn a yarn from the cotton that you have got from the tailor. So what now next is the activity three that I want you all to perform. Now as we, as we know now uh, the cotton is made up of uh, yarns, correct? So different kind of yarns. Now we'll see what each yarn is made up of what each loose thread is made up of. So what I want you to do is just take that single yarn, take a yarn, take a yarn at your hand. Then what you do is with one hand, you just press one edge of the yarn, one edge. Then another edge, at the other edge, what you do is you just scratch it. So what you'll observe is what you'll observe is that the yarn will get further separated into thin 
strands. What is that called? That is called fibers. So, as you have seen, while uh, while knitting anything or like while sewing anything, like any clothes, what you can see is like it's very really difficult sometimes to uh, put the uh, the thread through the needle because uh, we could see several thin strands. Those thin strands are nothing but those are fibers. Okay, now as we know that fabric, cotton, cotton fabric is made up of yarns. Then these yarns are again made up of thin strands called fibers. So fibers are of different kinds. Okay, so it could be cotton, it could be jute, it could be silk. So now let us study what are the different types of fibers that we, as we know. What are fabrics? Fabrics are like those, what are fabrics made up of? Fabrics are made up of thin strands called yarns. And yarns are again made up of more thin strands, thinner strands called fibers. So five, uh, like we know fabric is what is made up of. It is made up of yarns. And these yarns are again made up of more thinner strands. What is that? Fibers. So what we are going to study now is fiber. So there are various kind of fibers like cotton, jute, silk and wool. So where do we get this from? We get this from plants and animals. So they are called, so they are called natural fibers as we are getting them from plants and animals. So what do we get from plants? We get from plants cotton and jute from plants, silk and wool from animals. Got it? So now what we are going to study is now cotton like cotton uh, like wool where do we get from wool? We get it from the Fleece of sheep. Okay, and also sometimes we get from uh, rabbit, goat, but most of the time wool we get from the fleece of sheep. Got it? So, where do we get silk from? So, silk is mainly made from the cocoon or silkworm. Got it? So, likewise, we have for cotton, we have plants. That is cotton plant. And for jute, we obviously get from plant. From the jute plant. So, now there are uh, various kind of nowadays, like uh, before like one million, uh, not, not one million, but uh, many years uh, back, there was only uh, these sources of uh, fabrics, fibers. But nowadays, uh, like since uh, the new era has arrived, so there has been the uh, invention of uh, synthetic fibers as well. So that uh, we usually get it from chemicals. So those are not natural fibers. Those are synthetic fibers. So those are called as synthetic fibers. So what are those? Like for say polyester, mm, polyester acrylic, and we have many. Okay, so these are the synthetic fibers that we have. So, uh, uh, yeah, also nylon. Nylon also we get from the. So, now let us study uh, about cotton. Okay, the first. One cotton. So, have you ever made the weeks of weeks for oil lamps? Oil lamps, like in Diwali, usually we make weeks, right? We wrap it and we make it, uh, weeks for the oil lamps. So, cotton is used in various uh, purposes, like for filling in, filling mattresses, quilts, or pillows. 
okay even like uh, we use a house down laps and all right so cotton is used in various purposes so have you ever wondered where the where does it where does the cotton come from cotton actually comes from plants so what is the plant name it's a cotton plant so how is it grown cotton plant is usually grown in it grows in black soil and warm climate the soil has to be black and the climate has, is needs to be warm then only it favors the growth of cotton plant so what happens is like oh, have you ever visited a cotton field it looks like whenever it's the picking time then it's never it's harvesting time it looks like the field is covered with snow so what happens is cotton cotton balls are formed when it's ready to pick up right what happens is the fruits of cotton plant when it matures fruits when matures what it ha what happens to it it bursts open so then the seeds covered with cotton will be seeds covered with cotton will be seen so what how we do we harvest it it is like we pick it with hand so it's picked with hand so now as we have got the cotton balls from the cotton plant what is done is as it is picked with hands after that it's set apart by it's set apart from the seeds by combing so this process is called ginning of cotton so the process in which the cotton is separated the cotton fiber is separated from the seeds by combing is called ginning so after ginning uh, what happens is uh, like either it is used in the uh, feeding of the mattresses or in various purposes so the ginning is the last portion that for in the formation of cotton so have you ever wondered why uh, take take like a piece of cotton from your mattress or a pillow so what happens is you set the uh, you try to set those uh, cotton apart so you try pulling at the edges so what you would see you would see thin strands so those are called fibers so that was cotton fibers so as we are talking about cotton those are called cotton fibers so they are also used in some synthetic uh, items so we will talk though as we have studied about cotton i want you to do one activity that is in which parts of india is the cotton harvested so now we'll go to move on to jute so jute is mainly harvested from the stems of jute plant jute plant so it's mainly harvested during rainy season and in india it's harvested in west bengal bihar and some so mainly you find in the states uh, the harvesting of jute during rainy season and when it is harvested is it during the flowering stage of jute flowering stage so how is it harvested is the jute stems are are immersed in water in water for few days since the I, the raw materials has to get rot so after that after that the jute are uh, taken down with hand so now the machines are also available even for cotton so for jute also it's done but mainly it's done uh, by hand only so the jute are derived with hand so finally you'll get the jute item so what happens is the jute are first converted the jute fibers that you have got the jute fibers are first converted to yarns that means the threads right so the yarns are again converted into fabrics then you will get your jute fabric we have seen uh, the jute and cotton how is it harvested so to make the uh, like yarns out of fibers there is a process called uh, like spinning 
So what is done is like for cotton, now we will see how is it spun. Okay, so what happens is like to make uh, yarns out of fibers, you have to do a process called spinning. So it can be done. I want you all to do one activity again. So what you can do is you just take uh, like cotton. Okay, it's a normal cotton that you have at home. So what I want you to do is just hold it with one hand and just with the another hand just a pinch the forefinger and the thumb. So what you do is you just start pulling it, just pulling it and rubbing it. So as long as you pull it, you form a thread. Got it? So that is what is called spinning. So earlier it was like um, hand spinning. So there were also devices called um, uh, Tuckley. So it is a hand uh, operating device. Operating device. So uh, also there were like uh, other uh, other hand operated device where the cotton was spun. Uh, so so that it could be formed into it. It can be converted into yarns. So, Tuckley is a hand operating machine and also we had Charaka. So, Charaka we all know it was popularized by Mahatma Gandhi as a part of independence movement. So, he encouraged everyone to use uh, hand spun, hand spun clothes so that they can shut down the British uh, synthetic materials, right? So, it was like uh, in 1956 that the government passed an act that's going to promote Khadi and Village Industries Commission. So it was passed in 1956. So it promoted the uh, use of hand spun cottons, uh, cotton yarns. Okay, so uh, now uh, we know that it's the clothes that uh, is made up of cotton. First is the Cotton has to be dyed from the plant. So after that, it's hand spun. Like the spinning is done either through the hand operated device like Takli and Charaka. And nowadays, as the it has been like uh, more development has been done. So there are like big big machines to do a various uh, mass of work at one time. So it has lessened the pressure of work to people. So nowadays, uh, Charaka and Takli are hardly used. But big, big machines are used to just form the yarns out of cotton fibers. So, for fibers are first converted to yarns through spinning, then again it's converted into fabrics. Then that is when when we get our clothes. Got it? We have studied uh, like how a fabric is made. So the yarns are arranged together to make a fabric, right? So. Uh, what happens is now uh, we learn about uh, the different processes in which uh, fabric is made. So the yarns are arranged into fabric in two different ways that is weaving and knitting. First we'll go for the weaving. So we can practice it at home with the papers as well. So weaving is nothing, it's actually the arrangement. of yarns to make a fabric so it could be like the arrangement of two yarns or to make a fabric okay so i want you all to do one activity to just get example of how weaving is done so uh, take two sheets of paper like for say example you are taking two yarns got it so how a yarns is got how a yarns is prepared we all have done like the different fibers are taken together and it's like uh spin and then then the yarns is formed right so now we are making a fabric out of yarns two yarns got it so now activity would be the weaving so here take two sheets of paper okay Take two sheets of paper like for different col colors, two different colors. So let us say green and orange or green or white. So now what you do is cut the square pieces. Now cut the square pieces of both the papers with uh, like uh, with 
width and length equal to equals to 30 centimeter got it so now what we do is fold both into half so fold both into half like in one you have to fold in such a way that uh, it is like you could do draw lines and draw the lines in such a way that it's on the edge so for another one you draw lines in, such, in the same way but in the other edge just opposite to the edge that of the previous sheet now cutting out full now as you have drawn different lines like for example you have cut into a square here I want you all to draw lines okay similarly another one you have to like it's a square piece similarly you have to draw lines from the opposite end so now as you have drawn this you have to cut cut it you got so when you you have already folded it so when you cut it when you unfold it as you have already cut it when you unfold it how it appears it will be like like this got it like an e shape so now we can do the process of weaving like it will appear after the weaving like when you put this both things together like per se it appears like this so now you start weaving and it will appear somewhat like this after weaving so this is how this is how you get a fabric out of two yarns so uh, now let's say for say for example for if we take a wool okay a yarn wool so a thread is usually very much thinner and it's very much difficult to manage but still like in india it has been like practiced for so long it, it's been done with hand only so two threads are taken together to form a fabric two yarns are taken together to make a fabric this is how weaving is done this is the process of weaving is done got it now we'll study about the next process that is uh, as we have already studied about weaving how is it done so as we know now the weaving is done with two yarns right so two yarns are taken taken to weave so uh, like uh, as it is like the threads are com very much smaller as compared to uh, the sheets of paper so here what happens is the weaving is done usually on looms okay so the looms are either hand operated or power operated so that is how weaving is done to that is the arrangement of two yarns into a fabric that is a fabric is found formed out of yarns so here now we'll study about knitting so knitting is also one of the process in which fabrics are formed out of yarns so in knitting only one yarn is used for knitting so as you have seen your like socks um uh, like uh, mufflers or any clothes so what happens is when you pull a yarn when you pull a yarn, just pull a yarn, try pulling a yarn and from the one edge, what happens is it will go on continuously drawing, right? It will continuously draw, unraveling the fabric. So your what happens to the fabric material that you have? The shoes, the shocks, or the muffins, or any kind of clothes that made of fa fabric, what happens is when it unravels, it will continuously draw until it ends, right? So, this is uh, like knitting is done uh, either with hand. So, we have seen, right, our parents knitting or our mother's knitting, right? So, it is usually done by hand or by machines as well. 
So the one that is done by hand is usually in case of wools. Okay, so the one that is done by machines, it's already uh, it's also wools, but uh, like in some cases you'll also find cotton, silk, and every material in uh, machines because it cannot be done by hands. So usually knitting is done uh, usually by hand in case of wool, like woolen clothes. You usually find it knitted by hands. Got it? So now as we have completed knitting and weaving, now we know that these are the two processes which is used to make fabrics. That means whatever fabric material or cloth has, it's usually the product of weaving and knitting. Now we, uh, we have the idea how is a fabric formed, right? So, uh, do you want to know what the history of like how this uh, clothes, like today what we wear, how those were like in ancient times? Like in ancient times, what used to happen was like people used uh, like twigs <clears throat> or bark of trees, trees or leaves, big leaves to cover themselves. And also in the like in early eras, what used to happen was like these trees, like these twigs, were like twisted together to form strands, and that we use in mattresses. <clears throat> so they use it as mattresses or any necessary items they use, and even vines, animal fleas, or hair were like twisted into long strands. And that was not again like woven, that was again uh, woven to fabric. So, until the invention of needle, people used to just <clears throat> wear this fabric only. There, was, there were no such things like stitching until the needle was discovered in the late. So what happened? What happened is like they used to just uh, cover the different parts of the body, different parts of body, with fabric, using different methods. Okay, there were very different ways that you, they used to uh, ravel uh, around their bodies, different ways. So that is uh, that is when needle was not discovered. So when needle was discovered, people started stitching. So since then, different kinds of clothes that we wear today, like pants, t-shirts, and many more, like we know, those were like discovered in the late ancient times, that is, what we get today as pan t-shirts and various clothing material but before the needle was before like pre-needle era we can say the fabric was just worn around by the people just to cover their body there were no kind such kind of sizes and shapes or any kind of stitching stuff okay so isn't that interesting that even today as there are many sources of uh, stitching and weaving, all those kind of things. Still, saris, turban, dhoti. So these are the things that still in today's era also, since the uh, civilization is much developed, still these things are worn without stitching. So isn't it inter interesting? So now let us have a look. Like. Uh, uh, people used to uh, in the uh, ancient times also people used to um, wear the cotton fabrics fabrics that was cultivated in the near the river Ganga and even flax was used to make uh, fabrics Got it? Even flax was used to make fabrics. So flax and cotton was usually uh, seen in ancient Egypt. 
where people used to cultivate it in the near the river river Nile. So what they used to do is they used to use the flax and cotton as fabric and they used to just wear it around their uh, cover it around and cover they use it to cover their body since until neither was discovered. So now we know that like cotton rolls as you have got so what happens to this is it's ginned that means ginning is done then you will get what is called Fiber. Okay, so that th this fiber is again spun. That means spinning is done. So that is when you get yarns. So again, what is done is this yarns are either weaved, either weaving is done, or knitting is done to finally get the fabric. So now have we have the total idea of how do we get the fabric. So after this fabric is formed then we, we do get our clothing materials. Clothing materials like oh, after stitching. So this is the final product. So the final product is actually what we wear, but this is the final product which is used for the first teaching different kind of clothes. Now we know fiber to fabric. We have completed the fiber to fabric journey now. So now we have the total idea of how the fabric material that we use to make stitch our clothes or we use as clothing material is got. So that's it for today. See you in the next class. Thank you for